Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. On this video, these are a few things to negotiate about. So I am going to be giving you a bit more additional information on David De Gea. Then I'm going to be giving you the breaking news regarding Alv Alvaro Fernandez Carreras. Then I'm going to be talking with you a bit more about Jaden Sancho from Borussia Dortmund. But we'll start with the news regarding David De Gea. So recently David De Gea... Um, has dropped a hint on his future with Manchester United and he intends to stay at the club for several years. Now, David De Gea has now made 400 appearances for Manchester United in all competitions. Don't forget he has become only the second goalkeeper uh, to make 400 appearances for the club after Alex Stefani. And David De Gea has already overtaken Peter Schmeichel on appearances. Uh, David De Gea, you know, will be playing tonight against Crystal Palace. So that will be his 400 and, 401th appearance for the football club. Now, I'm very, very convinced that David De Gea will remain our number one goalkeeper for next season. He has been our number one goalkeeper anyway for several years. Uh, I think maybe in the foreseeable future, Dean Henderson will be will be our number one goalkeeper because quite a few weeks ago, Solskjaer was talking about Dean Henderson, saying that you know he expects him to be England's number one and Manchester United's number one goalkeeper in the future. But on the other hand, he did say that Dean Henderson is not yet ready to become our number one. Dean Henderson is out on loan with Sheffield United at the moment. You know, it's been his second season on loan with Sheffield United. Uh, he's going to be staying at Sheffield United for the remainder of this season. He's been Sheffield United's player of the season. You know, Dean Henderson's had a few loan spells, you know, with Stockport, Grimsby and Shrewsbury. We did get Dean Henderson from Carlisle back in 2011. Uh, we got him at just the age of 14. But he's done very, very well at Sheffield United, like I said. Uh, like I said, David De Gea has been a long servant at the football club. You know, this has been his ninth season at Manchester United. He is now approaching his 10th year at the football club. <clears throat> and Solskjaer you know, said that David De Gea has been the best goalkeeper in the world for the last nine or ten years. And I think, you know, David De Gea has had seven good years out of the nine years he's been with us, like I've mentioned before, because I think in the last couple of years... David De Gea has been a liability, reflecting on, you know, the calamitous mistakes he has made. But, you know, David De Gea has won everything domestically at the football club and he has won individual awards, reflecting on, you know, his good run of performances. You know, he has been with us since 2011. I think, didn't we pay just over £18 million for him from Atletico Madrid? Uh, last year, David De Gea signed a four-year deal at the football club were 375 grand a week. So David De Gea is the highest paid at the club at the moment and he is the highest paid goalkeeper in the world. And, you know, he's in his late 20s now, is David De Gea. He's in his late 20s. Uh, before, there was talks about David De Gea possibly going to Juventus, also to PSG were in for him. Don't forget, back in 2015, David De Gea was close to joining Real Madrid, but due to a fax machine, the deal never materialised. And I did say, you know, when David De Gea does eventually leave Manchester United, he will go back to Spain. The main explanations is because he was born in Spain, his relatives are in Spain, girlfriends from Spain, also began his footballing career in Spain. But yeah, he's still a very, very highly rated goalkeeper, is David De Gea. So yeah, so he's intended on staying at the football club for several years. So that's the breaking news on David De Gea. You know, now let me give you the breaking news on Alvaro Fernandez Carreras from Real Madrid. So according to uh, the Spanish newspaper AS, they are saying that Manchester United have reached an agreement with Real Madrid to sign Alvaro Fernandez Carreras. Uh, reportedly, we have signed him on a free transfer. His contract with Real Madrid expired last month, at the end of last month. Uh, I think Real Madrid were in the process of trying to get him a new contract, but obviously, you know, he decided not to sign uh, a contract renewal. So, yeah, so reportedly we've got him on a free transfer. Uh, reportedly, he's set to sign a four-year contract with Manchester United. So, that will keep him um, at the football club until 2024. 
He is only at the age of 17. Um, he is a left back, is this player. And I think, you know, we're actually you know, in search for a left back, uh, despite the fact that we've got Luke Shaw and Brandon Williams at left back. Um, obviously, you know, Luke Shaw's got an ankle problem at the moment. Obviously, you know, I think Brandon Williams has got a concussion and that. But yeah, it's looking likely, you know, Alvaro Fernandez is going to be our first signing uh, for the summer transfer window. But it's very, very good because, you know, he can join up now with our youth squad and he may even train with the senior squad. And I've got to make an admission regarding Solskjaer. I think he has promoted the youth very, very well this season. You know, you know, Mason Greenwood, he's done well. Brandon Williams, he's done well. He's, you know, promoted the likes of James Garner and Tahif Chon and recently Ethan Laird got promoted into the senior squad. And I think we've had the youngest squad in the Premier League this season. So, yeah, uh, don't forget, not too long ago, we signed Mark Joado from Barcelona as well. He was another youngster that we recommended in, you know. So, we've got um, a lot of good young players, you know, we really, really have. So, that's the latest news regarding Alvaro Fernandez from Real Madrid. Now, let's delve into the news on Jadon Sancho from Borussia Dortmund. So, the news is regarding Jadon Sancho. He has made a transfer decision and he wants to make a return to Manchester. Now, Borussia Dortmund are expecting a £109 million bid from Man United. But I think we're only willing to meet Borussia Dortmund's asking price for Sancho if we get qualification for the Champions League. If we don't get qualification for the Champions League, then you know I don't think we're going to go in for Jadon Sancho. Uh, Borussia Dortmund do remain ruthless over their valuation. You know, they have said several times that they want over £100 million for Sancho. And we've also said several times we are not willing to smash our transfer record for him. Recent reports did say that we was only willing to pay £50 million for Sancho. Then it is said we had set our limit. It said we was only willing to pay £60 or £70 million for any player. <laughs> But I think Borussia Dortmund have come to accept the fact that Jadon Sancho does want to leave. So they are now looking for replacements for him. Uh, Jadon Sancho is our number one priority target. And, you know, we've been interested in Jadon Sancho since 2017. Uh, the deadline's been set for him. I think we've got until the 10th of August to sign Jadon Sancho. If we don't sign by the 10th of August, the deal is off. And I think it did say, you know, we're planning to sell six players to fund the move for Sancho. It recently said, you know, that Manchester City have been back in for Sancho. Uh, because as you all know, Manchester City's two-year European ban, two-year Champions League ban has been um, overturned by say Yes, so reflects on that now. City, you know, may be competitive in the summer transfer market. City did get fined £25 million in February for breaking financial fair play rules. Uh, but that fine has now been reduced to £8 million. So City will be playing in the Champions League next season. And Sancho could be open to making a return to City. You know, don't forget, he is a former Manchester City player. You know, Sancho did endure two years with Manchester City. But the main explanation why he left Manchester City is because he did not get any first team opportunities. Dortmund got him in 2017 for just £8 million. So Dortmund got him for next to nothing. You know, this has now been Sancho's third season with Borussia Dortmund. And analysing the performances in the few years he's been with them, his valuation has persistently grown. Dortmund is the third club in his playing career because before he was at Dortmund, like I said, he was at City. And before he was at City, he was at Watford. And he was at Watford for several years, was Jadon Sancho. He was at Watford for several years. Sancho has still got a contract with Borussia Dortmund until 2022. Don't forget there were stories coming out quite a few weeks ago saying that Jadon Sancho has agreed personal terms with Man United and he said he has agreed a five-year contract with a football club worth around £140,000 a week. But it did say you know, no fee has yet come to an agreement. He said the exact same thing in February that Jadon Sancho had agreed almost every little detail of move to Man United. But again, it said no fee had come to an agreement and that. So Borussia Dortmund's asking price has been the stumbling block. 
has been the stumbling block. Uh, but Borussia Dortmund have said quite a few times, you know, they will not step in Sancho's way if he does want to leave Borussia Dortmund. Don't forget, quite a few weeks ago, Sancho was fined £8,000 for breaking lockdown rules. Um, reflects on that then, you know, Borussia Dortmund said, you know, that they're losing their patience with the player. We've already made a promise to him as well that we are willing to offer him the number seven because, you know, we have got number seven vacant at the moment and we've had a lot of good number sevens up and down the generations. And, you know, Fabrizio Romano has spoken about the Jaden Sancho transfer saga quite a few times. I think Christian Fark, who's a German football expert, he's also spoken about it as well. So, yeah, there's still a chance, you know, we can get Jaden Sancho on the board, but I want him at Manchester United because he's well Premier League proven. Um, he's got a very, very good friendship with Marcus Rashford and he is predominantly a right winner. We have been looking at a few alternatives to Jaden Sancho because I will make an admission, there is cheaper solutions in him. You know, we have been looking at Usain Dembele from Barcelona recently. We've also been looking at Ferran Torres from Valencia. But um, but Jaden Jaden Sancho is the player that Manchester United want. So that is the latest news on all of that. Like I updated on my recent videos, um, it has been confirmed now when the summer transfer window is opening. It is opening on the twenty seventh of July, which is not long away now, about eleven days, and it's open until October. Like I've said, though, in regards to the summer transfer window, there is a lot of uncertainty, obviously, you know, due to this coronavirus pandemic. Uh, due to this uh, coronavirus pandemic, you know, there is a lot of uncertainty because Solskjaer did say the other week that, you know, he's unsure how much he will get to spend. He says our plans for next season, our pre-season plans and our transfer strategy is up in the air because of the uncertainty of how the current season will finish. <laughs> but I can trust, you know, Solskjaer, you know, to get us the right players in the summer transfer window. You know, don't forget we've already taken a £140 million loan, you know, to help us get the players that we want in. Uh, like I did say to you yesterday, uh, Manchester United have put six players up for sale, you know, to raise funds to get summer signings. And those six players we've put up for sale is Jesse Lingard, Alexis Sanchez, Diego Delo, Marcus Rojo, Chris Smalling and Phil Jones. Because we are going to get rid of more of the deadwood in the summer transfer window, you know. So we're going to generate money, you know, if we do get rid of players. You know, Solskjaer has obviously, you know, got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he got recommended in to Manchester United. You know, we obviously, you know, we saw Ashley Young leave this year. After he enjoyed eight and a half years at the football club, he went to win Milan. You know, we saw Chris Smalling and Rojo go out on loan. Obviously, you know, Dean Ensign's out on loan. Damian left last summer. Herrera left last summer, he went to PSG, he endured five years at the club, Fellaini left in January 2019, uh, he went to China, he was the first player to leave under Solskjaer, but Fellaini did endure six years with the club, so was a long servant, Lukaku went to Inter Milan last summer, and of course Sanchez went out on loan, uh, Joe Pereira's out on loan, uh, Joe Pereira's out on loan, uh, recently as well, Angel Gomez left the football club. I think he's going abroad or he's already gone abroad. Uh, obviously, you know, as well, Valencia left the football club last summer after he endured 10 years with Manchester United. So, you know, Solskjaer's got rid of a lot of players since he got recommended in to the football club. But Solskjaer knows for the summer transfer window that he has got the backing of Ed Woodward and he's also got the backing of the Glazers. One thing Solskjaer did confirm regarding the summer transfer window as well is that he will avoid buying any rotten apples in the squad because he warned our players quite a few weeks ago now that he will not tolerate any rotten apples in the squad. He has confirmed his transfer priorities as Solskjaer. You know, he did say to Ed Woodward the three positions, you know, where he wants to strengthen up and Solskjaer said he wants to recommend the striker in he wants to recommend a right winner in and he's also looking to recommend a centre half in, even though we have got seven centre halves in the team, because there is still deficiencies in the squad that do need to be addressed. 
Uh, by the way, Solskjaer is very, very happy with our attacking, la our attacking line. Um, and he did say in his press conference yesterday, building up to the Palace game, he did say in his press conference that uh, Man United's attacking philosophy, he believes Man United's attacking philosophy is close to emulating the great sides of the Alex Ferguson reign because, you know, you've had Rashford, that's been in a good vein of form. You know, Rashford scored two goals now since the resumption of the season. And like I said, earlier on in the season, Marcus Rashford was a big miss for Man United because he was out with that back injury. Um, also, too, you know, you've got Anthony Martial. He's on 21 goals now in all competitions this season. He's now scored 50 goals in the Premier League for Manchester United. And this has been Anthony Martial's fifth season at the football club. You know, he has been a long serving. You know, he has been playing in that number nine role this season. But Martial, you know, looks very, very effective in that central position. But that's actually you know, not Martial's predominant position. His predominant position is out wide in that number 11. But Rashford's been playing out wide this season. You know, you've had uh, Mason Greenwood, you know, he's on 16 goals in all competitions this season for the club. 16 goals in all competitions this season. Um, don't forget, you know, Solskjaer did say that Mason Greenwood is ready to play for England at senior level. And he said, you know, that Mason Greenwood is undroppable. But um, maybe he's going to miss out tonight against Palace Greenwood uh, because he has got an ankle injury. Don't forget in our previous game against Southampton, um, he got that bad challenge from Romeo and Solskjaer said that Romeo should have actually you know, been sent off. So probably, you know, we'd, I think we were going to rest Greenwood tonight anyway, even if you know he hadn't have had, even if you know he hadn't have had that injury. But between uh, the trio, Martial, Rashford and Greenwood, I think they've scored like 57 goals in all competitions this season, you know. But um, there you go. But the summer transfer window will be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's fourth transfer window as Manchester United manager. And like I said, you know, I have really, really seen improvements under Solskjaer. You know, like I said, a lot of aspects of our game have really, really improved. You know, we are scoring more goals. We are creating more chances. We're being more clinical. Uh, the combinations in the team also look much better. Because, you know, we are now on an 18-game unbeaten run. And if we do beat Crystal Palace tonight, we will extend our unbeaten run to 19 games in all competitions. I think as it stands at the moment, we're unbeaten in our last 10 league games. But, you know, this is our best vein of form since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the interim manager. I think in this 18-game unbeaten run, we have scored 48 goals in all competitions. You know, we've now got three games remaining in the Premier League. And that is obviously, you know, Crystal Palace tonight. West Ham's the next league game after Palace and then Leicester. And, you know, the game against Leicester, you know, could actually decide who finishes in the top four. I still very, very convinced that Man United can finish in the top four despite the fact that we didn't beat Southampton and despite the fact that we missed out on the opportunity to go third. But we are still definitely, you know, in that top four race, but we've got to win all our three remaining games. Definitely in that. Um, but yeah, other improvements I've seen under Solskjaer is our recruitment because I think our recruitment's definitely improved under him. You know, Solskjaer's recommended five good players into the football club so far and spent just over £200 million. Last summer, he recommended Daniel James and wan and Harry Maguire in. And in January, he recommended Bruno Fernandes and Odin Agalo in. So our recruitment's def definitely improved under him. Uh, we've done very, very well against the top six sides this season. We've taken 18 points against the top six sides this season. So that's something else that's also improved. Uh, Solskjaer's decision making's improved as well because earlier on the season, it was contrast. Because earlier on the season, Solskjaer didn't really have a plan A and you know he didn't really have a plan B and that. He still does get some things wrong and there's still some things he does need to work on at the club. But you know he's, he's improved you know a hell of a lot of Solskjaer. And, you know, Solskjaer's now been to the football club 18 months, so he's been here a year and a half. And analysing the vast majority of his tenure, you know, we have been very inconsistent. Because earlier on in the season, don't forget, we'd enjoyed our worst start to a Premier League season for 30 years. You know, and at that point there was talks of Mauricio Pochettino coming in. And there was also talks of Masmiliano Allegri also coming in to the football club. But like I said, uh, next season, our expectations will be to challenge for the Premier League title. 
you know, because this has now been the seventh season we failed to mount any kind of title challenge up. You know, we are the most successful team in England. You know, we have won 20 titles, 13 of them Premier Leagues. I think uh, we've won about 45 trophies um, in total. Um, obviously, you know, we won 38 trophies under Ferguson, including 13 Premier Leagues. But, you know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013. So, like, like I said, the last time we won it was in Alex Ferguson's last season. And Solskjaer did recently say that we've got to spend money to compete with the likes of Manchester City and Liverpool. Uh, don't forget, we've got a chance of winning two trophies this season, and that is the FA Cup and the Europa League. You know, we are into the semi-finals of the FA Cup. We have got Chelsea on Sunday, a game I am really, really looking forward to. And um, obviously, you know, we're more or less into the last eight of the Europa League because we are 5 and up against last from the first leg. We've got to play Alaska in the second leg on the 5th of August. And the quarterfinals of the Europa League is on the 10th and the 11th of August and that. But I'm convinced, you know, we can win, win at least one trophy. That we can win at least one trophy this season. Well, I'm hopeful that we can anyway. Well, I'm hopeful, you know, that we can anyway because we've actually, you know, only won three trophies since the Alex Ferguson era and that was the FA Cup under Van Gaal and the Europa League and the League Cup under Jose Mourinho and all of that. But yeah, definitely, you know, Solskjaer will be Manchester United manager next season, even if we weren't to get qualification for the Champions League because, like I said, Solskjaer needs at least another season because it is a transition period and it has been a transition period for a while. And, you know, he's still in the process of rebuilding this Manchester United team because, like I've said before, like I've said before, Solskjaer's inheriting, you know, plays even the Mourinho era, he's inheriting some plays even the Van Gaal era, and he's inheriting, you know, Matt Reed from the David Moyes era. And there's still a few plays even from the Alex Ferguson era. But actually, you know, most of this team is Jose Mourinho's. And in the last seven years, we have spent close to the billion pound range on players. And we've recruited over 30 odd players in since the Alex Ferguson era. And, you know, Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since the Alex Ferguson era. You know. And another good thing regarding Solskjaer is that, you know, he's got that experience now as a manager. He's gained it, you know, flexing how long he's been with us. Uh, Man United, like I said, is the third club in his managerial career. But yeah, anyway, looking forward to the game tonight against Crystal Palace. Uh, your match reaction should be coming up tomorrow morning for it. Um, it's a game we should win because, like I mentioned, you know, Crystal Palace have been in a bad vein of form. You know, they have lost their last five league games of Crystal Palace. I think they are sitting like 14th in the Premier League table. Uh, I'll give you some of the team news already on my preview. You know, Crystal Palace have got a few injuries. They've got Gary Cahill out, James Tompkins, Jeffrey Slup. Uh, they've also got Christian Benteke suspended, so he won't be involved tonight for Crystal Palace. We usually got a very, very good record against them, but, you know, we lost a reverse fixture earlier on in the season by two goals to one, surprisingly. And that ended a run of 22 top-flight games without a win for Palace against us. So, you know, they would have been delighted with that victory. I think it was Patrick Van Antholt that had scored the winner in that game. We won the game at Selhurst Park last season by three goals to one. You know, like I said, you know, Solskjaer's going to make some rotation, I think, in this game against Palace tonight. Uh, because in the last five league games, Solskjaer's gone with the exact same team. Uh, and that's the first time, you know, we've done that since February 1993. So that's around 27 years ago now. Uh, we don't know if Williams or Shaw are going to be available. But if they're not, then I think Delore will play at left back, to be quite honest with you, if they're not going to be available. Like I said, Mason Greenwood's got an ankle injury. You know, we have still got Phil Jones and Alex Tuanzebe out. I heard, you know, that Paul Popper uh, could be dropped for tonight's game. Uh, could be dropped for tonight's game because I think since the resumption of the season, Paul Popper has made a fantastic impact prior to the game against Southampton because I thought he was very, very poor against Southampton. You know, he was at fault for, Dan, uh, for Stuart Armstrong's goal, but he was easily dispossessed by Danny Inns that led to Stuart Armstrong's goal. You know, but maybe maybe he will be dropped, you know, Paul Popper, you know. But prior to Southampton game, he's made a fantastic impact and his combination with Bruno Fernandes has been absolutely fantastic. 
Uh, like I said, I didn't really have a perception on Paul Popper earlier on in the season because obviously, you know, he was out with that ankle injury. I give you the news regarding Paul Popper this morning, didn't I? Reportedly, he's close to signing a five-year contract with Manchester United. Manchester United. And this contract extension is expect is expected to be announced at the end of the season. So if he signs this uh, new contract, Popper, it will keep him at the club until 2025. You know, of course, as it stands at the moment, Popper's just got under a year left on his Man United contract, but the club do have an option to extend it for a further year. So we know now that Paul Popper is staying at Manchester United, you know, which is very, very good news. And I expect Solskjaer to make some changes in our midfield tonight as well. Maybe he could drop Popper and Matic and put McTomway and Fred there instead. Or if he starts Popper, he could put um, McTomway. Yeah, if he starts Popper, he'll put McTomway alongside Popper or Fred alongside Paul Popper. Uh, possibility chance as well. James will start tonight ahead of Mason Greenwood in that. But he said the team is based on tonight in his press conference. You know, he said it's irrelevant for the game on Sunday against Chelsea. You know, but that's going to be a very, very big game against Chelsea on Sunday. It really, really is. But we have to win this game against Palace, you know, because we unfortunately dropped two points against Southampton. You know, we should have won that game because, you know, it was 2-1 up. You know, Southampton scored in the 96 minute of stoppage time through Obi Femi. And it was definitely Victor Lindelof that was accountable for that goal. So, yeah. So your reaction will be coming up tomorrow morning. Your reaction will be coming up tomorrow morning. But like I said, I still don't know if Solskjaer has the foreseeable future for Man United. You know, time will tell. It will tell. And hopefully we can get our 21st title under Solskjaer. Like I said, you know, there's been problems at the club for several years. You know, there's been problems with the club's ownership, the Glazers. You know, there's been a lot of problems with Ed Woodward. You know, there's been a lot of problems with the club's board. So let's also put that into the equation. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon.